What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to bring you a review update of my Nikon Z6. I've done a beginning impressions, kind of my overall thoughts of it, uh, and a couple months review of it, but I kind of want to give an update of it because I've been using it a lot more lately. Uh, I do want to mention that this is actually being shot on an iPhone 10. X Max, I'm not really sure. So if the quality isn't quite up to par, that's why. And the reason why I'm doing that is because you can't use this and review it at the same time and kind of give uh, an overview of it. Uh, so I've had this for over six months now. I actually bought it secondhand used. Uh, it is a USA model. I believe I paid $1,300 for it, 1200 between 12 and 1400 I honestly do not remember because it did come bundled with a memory card and a few other things. Uh, so currently I just have the 24 millimeter 1.8 S lens. I just ordered the 50 millimeter 1.8 S lens. Uh, and my first overall, you know, just using the camera, it's very easy to use ergonomics. Uh, if you look at the back, it does have a joystick. Um, it's very simple to use once you get the hang of it. Uh, there's not a whole lot of complexity to it. Uh, previously I had, I had a Nikon D800 uh, and I had a Canon 5D Mark III uh before that and those cameras can be very very complex this can too uh but it's very user friendly very easy to pick up and once you have a few settings set uh it's pretty easy to actually go through and and use it uh so if you're familiar with nikon it's gonna it's gonna be a breeze for you you literally will have almost no learning curve uh, if you're new to the uh, mirrorless camera or it's maybe your first mirrorless full frame camera and maybe you had like an aps-c camera four or just a point and shoot uh, it will take a little bit of getting used to once you get the menu set though um, you really don't have a whole lot to mess with it has good mini layout uh, it's very similar to Nikon or to Canon's layout uh, it's a little different but overall uh, I think Nikon and Canon have pretty good menu systems so once you get it set up there's really not a whole lot to actually fool around with uh, another thing that I like about actually using it is it does have a joystick on the back and it does have uh, this little I button here, which basically what that does is it brings you up to that kind of an infotainment. Basically, you can set these eight little, eight little tiles there and that will allow you to quickly access those, which is really nice. You can customize these. Uh, and if you look at it, this is my photo one, but if you switch it to there, it will actually switch over to your video ones, which my video ones are different than my photos. So uh, jumping between photo and video and kind of doing hybrid stuff is very, very easy to do. Uh, so I do like that about that. Uh, build quality is great. I haven't had any issues with any type of longevity or any type of, uh, you know, issues build wise or performance wise. The only thing that I'm kind of worried about in the long run is if you see like the rubber grips here, Nikon's not known for having the best rubber grips. And I do have a little, little teeny tiny mark there. It actually came like that when I bought it, but uh, I do feel like that these rubber grips may have to be replaced down the line because generally I keep my cameras for five, six, seven, ten 10 years. Um, because once you get a full frame camera, as long as you have some good lenses, there really is no reason to upgrade, especially if you're getting a newer mirrorless camera, those things will likely outlast uh, you know, a, a generation of time. You could probably keep them forever if you really wanted, if you got the, the right setup. Uh, so build quality is great. It feels really solid in the hand. It does have some heft to it. The bigger lenses you mount. So this is the 24 1.8 S, which isn't the lightest lens. Uh, it's also not the heaviest, especially if you look at some of Canon's uh, lenses out there, but it does have a little bit of weight to it, but that's mainly because it's an all uh, metal body, uh, it's an all aluminum, something along that, some type of metal. So it does have a little bit of, of weight to it. Uh, the rear screen, uh, is excellent. Uh, the rear screen and, and EVF, uh, the viewfinder here are top notch. I think they're one of the best in the game. Uh, maybe not compared to some of the newer cameras that were just released, the Canon, uh, what R5, R6. Uh, but the, the rear LCD screen is very vibrant, very, punchy. Uh, it is a touch screen, so you can touch on it. And I have it set up where once you touch on something, it will actually lock on that and focus on it, uh, which that is something that you can actually turn off here. Just by that, you can turn it off fairly easily. So that's something I really like about that. Uh, electronic viewfinder is nice. I do notice that I tend to shoot photos more with the rear LCD, which 
I think is actually a downfall. I need to start using the viewfinder more because a lot of times I will do that and then I'll notice that my photo is not quite in frame, mainly because you don't have the same view as you do as if you put it up to your eye there. Uh, you can change it to where it switches automatically or you can just you know prioritize the viewfinder or the LCD screen, which is nice. Uh, so that's something that that I really like about this. Um, over the, overall, besides that, battery life's great. I've had really good luck out of the battery in this. Uh, it's very similar to a standard DSLR, maybe a tad bit less depending on what you're doing, how much you use the screens, and if you're doing a lot of video. So I've recently went and picked pumpkins because I have a little, little five five month old. So we did that. Battery life was uh, was. You know, it was kind of like an all-day event. It was at an old farm uh, that we had to drive to, and the battery life was still at 50% or more when I uh, finished. So I would probably get a second battery just in case, but you could definitely do one battery and have no issues with it, uh, which I didn't. Uh, another thing is that I actually like and don't like is you have one XQD card slot, uh, which is a plus and a minus. Uh, these are really expensive and they have CF Express cards now because XQD cards are, are basically being phased out, uh, but they are really expensive and a lot of them are not in stock, especially if you get like the 64 or 32 gigabyte versions. Uh, they're hard to find and they're a lot, they're not all that in stock. The good thing is, is that these pins are actually in there. Uh, they're very uh, durable uh, memory cards. Uh, one slot may not be for everyone. It doesn't bother me, honestly. I'm not doing anything professionally with this. I would be a little annoyed if I was shooting a really long video and then the card died when I went to upload it, but that's just the price you, you pay for this. Um, so that's it. The lenses, uh, that's, while it may not be on the camera related, uh, the lenses I think are great and they're, I think they're really good if someone's looking to just do some, uh, you know, some hobby stuff or maybe get into some semi-pro stuff because they're not very expensive. Uh, the 24 1.8s, I guess it was a thousand dollars, but you can get them used. You can get them on sale sometimes. Uh, if you check out Nikon's outlet, they do have them refurbished from time to time. Uh, the 50 millimeters pretty cheap. 35 millimeters not too bad, especially if you wait until they go on sale. Uh, some of the newer lenses coming out, like the 50 millimeter 1.2s, I don't think that is for very many people. It's twenty, what, twenty three hundred dollars? A little over two thousand dollars. Uh, but that's one thing I like about this is that it's actually very reasonable to get some couple lenses for this, especially if you compare it to some of the old other systems like like uh, Canon. Most of they their lenses are focused on really high quality. Um, you know, Canon 1.2L. Um, a lot of their RF lenses is, are uh, very expensive. I mean, two two thousand twenty five hundred dollars, which is is nice, but it's probably a little bit overkill for some people. So I like that. The lenses are readily, easily available at an affordable price. Uh, what else? So again, it feels nice in the hands. Uh, it's very easy to get, you know, used to. There's no flash on this, but honestly, you don't need a flash because uh, it does have in-body image stabilization, five axis, I believe. So you could shoot handheld down to probably 1 15th of a second. I honestly put mine at like 1 50th because uh, I haven't had an issue where I have to shoot in that low of light. Uh, generally, most of the time I can I can get it there. Uh, it does have a back illuminated sensor, so tons of editing you can do with this. There's tons of different range and how far you can push the image. Uh, you can really boost the shadows up, put the highlights down. Uh, it will have a lot of uh, editing power, especially if you like doing that with your photos. Uh, and I tend to like Nikon colors a little bit better than Canon. Uh, they tend to just suit my tone a little bit more. Um, so that's really it. The only negative that I found, um, you know, if I'm just nitpicking is again, these uh, rubber handle. I don't know how long that will last. And if you look at my battery door, it's kind of got a little bit of wobble. I don't know if you'll be able to see that because I honestly don't know if it'll focus, but there's a little bit of wobble on that. So I'm not really sure what that is, a, is about, but I haven't had any issues with it. Um, it does have an icon's newer battery for the a little bit better battery life. Um, but that's one thing that I've just noticed. Uh, you can charge over USB-C with this uh, if you just want to do that. I generally just take the battery out and charge it that way. Uh, but you can charge over USB-C. Uh, it does have a mic input, headphone jack. Uh, this is the charger. This is Nikon standard charger. Nothing too 
fancy there. And this is uh, my microphone, which mounts on there fairly easily. I don't know what was wrong with this computer. Um, so that's really it. Um, highly recommend this camera. I know they're starting to, they're going to start coming out with the new ones. Uh, but I've had this for about six months. It's still very easy to use, especially once you've had it for a little bit and played around with it. It's very good for photo and video. Uh, the image quality is, it's a full frame mirrorless camera. It's going to be the same as the Sony a7 III or the Canon EOS R, uh, EOS RP. It doesn't matter. Most of these sensors are all generally about the same. Unless you get into some like the, the Nikon Z7 or the uh, Sony... Um, a7R 3 and 4 where they have these large sensors but honestly for most people any full frame mirrorless camera sensor is going to outreach anything that you'll be able to do with it. Uh, so that's it. It does have Wi-Fi where you can and Bluetooth where you can connect it to your phone which I have used on a, on occasion uh, with Nikon Snapbridge. Uh, it works pretty well. Not great but uh, it's a little laggy but it can get the job done if you need to get photos onto your phone quickly. It is it is a, a nice feature that once you get it set up and get it figured out, it, there is a little bit of a curve there to get it get it working properly. But once you do, it's there's no issues. Uh, so that's it, guys. If you have any questions, comments, leave them below. Sorry this is shot on the phone, but that's really the only way to kind of give you an idea of the camera and the, the overall look of it. Uh, one last thing. So it does have this top LCD screen. Uh, honestly, I would rather prefer this not to be here and maybe them take $100 off and knock that off altogether. I rarely, rarely look at that or ever use it, uh, mainly because everything's on the back of the screen or when you look through the viewfinder, it's all there on the viewfinder. It's basically the same information. So uh, I believe they're do it, they did that with the Nikon with the Z50 or the whatever the cheaper uh, full frame one is, Z5. Maybe that's it. I think it's the Z5. I'm not sure, but they have a cheaper one that doesn't have that which I would highly recommend that as a beginner camera over this. If you can't find this used, I would not buy this new uh, unless it was really deep discounted to under $1,500. Uh, you could probably find it for $1,100, $1,200 used if you really try. Just try to make sure it's a USA model or otherwise Nikon will not service it in the future. They're really bad about servicing non-USA model uh, cameras. That's it. Again, questions, comments below. If you like videos like this, let me know. Really happy with the camera. Happy at the price point I got it too because I did not want to spend a fortune on this. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good rest of the day. See you guys next time.